everyone. Welcome to the Nemosa Fridays podcast, a show where we share powerful life lessons and a few laughs as Gail empowers others as she sits at the intersection of people, purpose, and politics while sipping on mimosas. Now grab some orange juice and champagne and welcome your host, Gail Dudley. Are you ready to raise awareness of your brand, product, or service? Gail, the host of News in Motion and Nemosa Friday podcast, is an influencer who brings attention to every product she mentions. She started out with a few followers and is growing her base daily. Listeners, tune in Monday through Friday from around the U.S. and beyond. Let Gail help you expand and connect with new customers from all around. To get your brand, product, or services mentioned on her shows, just contact info.gaildudley at gmail.com to request her media deck. All right, y'all. I'm going to bring on the screen again. Share this, share this, share this. You're going to want to get this information. Dr. Greta Oliver. Um, She's holding a a doctoral degree in higher education from Ohio University. Dr. Greta... Thomas Oliver is a professional coach who specializes in student development. Um, Having spent years in the classroom as a student and teacher, Dr. Oliver is devoted to helping students transition from high school to higher education. Her areas of expertise include student development program administration, student recruitment, student retention, career preparation, and program development. She is the owner of Greta Oliver Consulting, a hands-on consulting business that specializes in transitioning to higher education, personal development, and career training. And then I'm going to give you Dr. Oliver's information, but let me get her on this screen this morning. Bam! Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Good. How are you? Welcome to the News in Motion family. Thank you so much. I, I noticed you've been on there. I'm like, uh-huh. She hooked. She hooked. She hooked. <laughs> Absolutely. So well, I want to give you as much time as possible to share this morning. And so I want to start by asking this question here. What inspired you to write this book? And y'all just want y'all to see some of this. I I'm, 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 I was I was digging out information on her. Uh, here's her book called uh, College Roadmap. And I even had the link there where you can get it where I will also put the link in the thread. But I also want y'all to know who's on here with you today. She got press releases everywhere. All right, y'all, she was on the Amazon. She Her book hit 12 Amazon bestseller lists uh, with first book, College Roadmap. So I want y'all to know, we, we have somebody on here who's going to really help us today. Um, I just want you to know that. So I just, I'm just so proud of you. I was digging your stuff. I'm like, this girl got it going on. Now, did I have it right? You're in North Carolina? Yes, I am. Chapel Hill, okay. North Carolina. Yes. That's what I thought. Okay. So what, what prompted you to write this book? Um, share with us. Okay. Well, um, as you just heard, um, I have a lot of experience in, in education, higher education, uh, post-secondary uh, education. And also I have four children, four adult children who all had their college going experiences. I have gone to predominantly white institutions for all of my degrees, and I have worked with students for, I don't even know, it's probably numbering in the thousands by now, over 25 years of working with students. And so I saw what kind of issues students face when they go to college and what kind of, um, you know, situation they find themselves in when they are kind of like just left on a campus and they really don't know what to do. I was also in that situation myself as a first uh, generation college student. And so I just want to be helpful. I want to help somebody today. And um, I just always tried to make it easier for the students that I work with and was that person that they could always come to and talk to, the person that kind of led them and helped them in their trajectory. And so I just wanted to continue to do that once I left higher education. And so that's really why I wrote the book, because I still want to be um, useful and helpful to students who are transitioning from high school to, to college. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yay. We're glad about that. 
tell us more about some of the things that you see or hear from both parents and students as you are helping them on this journey. Well, I see a lot of just confusion, really. And especially since COVID, more confusion has been introduced into the mix. Basically, um, it depends. It kind of depends uh, whether the student is a first time student going to college and they don't have uh, parents that went to college because sometimes they don't have any support. They don't know where they're going. They don't they just end up on campus, like I said, and they really don't know what to do and they can't ask anybody. And sometimes it could be a, a student that is kind of reserved, they're introvert, you know, maybe they're shy, whatever, and they don't have the confidence or the self-esteem to go ask for help. And sometimes they're just absolutely overwhelmed and lost. And by the time they really realize what's going on, it's really too late. Um, they've begun, you know, on a path that's destructive or they're, you know, not paying attention to their studies. They don't realize why they're on the campus, that they're really supposed to be getting an education. And then they, you know, kind of just lose themselves. And we have too many people, too many black and brown and people of color, students of color who have just lost it. They don't know what they're doing and they're not making it. And so we have a lot of dropouts. Right now there's a crisis for males, black males uh, in higher education. There's not many in, you know, involved in going to school. And so it's just really important to get that helping hand out there to parents as well as students, because a lot of times when, you know, they have no direction. And so that's what I've been trying to help with, with the uh, writing of the book, kind of like a path, like a guidebook, uh, an actual roadmap, if you will, to help someone get from point A to point B. And what we want to see is students get on campus, find a campus that fits somewhere where they feel comfortable and to be able to make it on that campus to graduation. That's what I want to see. And so that's why, you know, I've written a book and that's why I'm trying to help as many students as I can. I'm trying to make a difference one student at a time. I love this. So, and, and I'm going to turn the screen over to you so you can give us more details and resources. Before I do that, and before I ask the question, Adrian is saying students rising uh, to college don't always have the know-how of na navigating college life. I see Absolutely. it daily. She works at The Ohio State University. Absolutely. So um, she, she's aware of that. Um, mm -hmm. We also have Dr. Kim Carter on here as well, who's with Strayer. Um, so with, with saying that, um, not only... What I'm hearing in, in our conversation, there's a stress of, do I have the finances to do it? Mm -hmm. And then there's a stress of how do I navigate this yeah. being away from home? Yeah. And then there's a stress of, I don't have that teacher holding my hand or holding me accountable. Mm -hmm. So can you speak to those things? And as other questions come up, I'll pop those up as well. Okay. I think it's a combination of all of those things and, and it could all be hitting the person uh, that's involved in higher education at the same time. A lot of times you don't have even the self-confidence to really believe that you can even make it on a college campus. For example, as a first college, uh, first generation college student coming from Cleveland, Ohio, in Cleveland Public Schools, when I went to Bowling Green State University way back in the day, um, you know, I kind of felt like I was just being dropped off in the middle of nowhere. My parents hadn't gone to college. I really didn't have anyone to ask. And so uh, like, your, like your viewer said, I had no navigation skills. I really didn't know what was going on. And so, um, you know, you, have, you don't even have the confidence to kind of go and, and you also kind of feel some kind of embarrassment or shame um, because you have to ask for help or because you feel like you need to ask somebody for help and you haven't been used to asking somebody for help. And so that's a problem that, you know, is really prevalent. And so I think that is why, you know, we having so much difficulty with students being able to trans tr make the transition easy. And plus you also have, um, you know, just homesickness, uh, things like that, things that kind of hit you when you look around and you don't have any of your family members nearby. And sometimes that's the first time that a student has gone away for any length of time and spent time away from home. And you don't have your mom and you don't have, you know, your dad or your family members to help you. And like um, you said, Gail, you don't have anybody to hold your hand. And so one thing that I did notice, I've been lately in some Facebook groups talking about, you know, 
college tips and parents are asking all kinds of questions. And this is one of the ways that I know that parents are completely confused because they're asking questions about this very important decision of them uh, helping their student to go to college from other people who don't know what's going on. And so it's really kind of disheartening because it's almost like the blind leading the blind in a way. Now, I'm not saying that everybody on these groups giving these answers out or providing um, some kind of direction, no, you know, don't know what they're talking about. But a lot of times, I think the best way that you find out about the college going process is to do the research for yourself. And so, like you're saying, Adrian, pride can get in the way. It's very, very hard to, you know, kind of admit, wow, I really don't have what it takes. And so, um, you know, that's a real hard lesson, especially when you get on a campus where you don't feel like you have uh, people that look like you. You don't have anybody that you feel like you can reach out to. And on campuses, I was that person. I was the one who was, you know, calling the students in for meetings and trying to talk to them and trying to encourage them and sending them to find their advocates. And there are advocates on campus, but you have to find them. You have to know where to go to get help. You have to know where these offices are. You have to know who these people are. You have to develop relationships with them so they'll be able to help you as a student on campus. And so um, this really wasn't <laughs> the way uh, I was going to present this. But I just want to kind of talk about that in general because it's so true. And a lot of those points are addressed in the book. The book, like I said, is a guidebook. It has 20 tips to help um, students and their families from uh, before the search, like before you're actually looking for college, after or uh, during the wait, which is when you're waiting for decisions to be made on the colleges that you've chosen, and after acceptance, after the student is actually on campus, what do you do then? And so, um, you know, I would just encourage you, as Gail said, if you know anyone, if you have a student that's that college age, maybe anywhere from middle school up through age 18, uh, or if you know anyone, and I know everybody on here knows someone, you know somebody. There's people in organizations, there's people in your youth, uh, church's youth group, there's friends of friends, there's relatives. Try to help somebody, get this book in their hands and try to you know, lend them some direction because it really is a hard process. And so what I wanted to really talk to you guys th this morning about was uh, finances in college and some ways in which you can kind of save some money. Now, unless you have been really planning uh, your child's college experience from the womb, you probably will need to uh, get some help with planning to go to college and, and you need to know about saving some money in the meantime. And so um, I know you guys are all working on financial freedom and we all want to be debt free and we all want to be in control of our lives financially. And so I just want to give you some tips really quick about ways in which you can save money uh, in relationship to college. And so one of the first things that I think that everybody should be aware of is everybody does not have to go to college. It's a good option for those that really want to go. But for students that have no desire to be on a college campus, regardless, you know, that is the biggest savings of money that you could possibly have is if you find out and you need to have a frank talk with the student in your life, okay, a frank talk. Listen, are you really wanting to go to college? Why do you really want to go to college? And have them give you some real reasons why they want to go. Now, if they can't come up with anything or they're hemming and hawing and they don't know what, then maybe this is not the time for them or not the path for them. And so that's, like I said, the biggest savings. Why go somewhere just because maybe your parents went or somebody else is encouraging you to, but that's not what you want to do. That is the biggest waste of money and the biggest waste of time. Secondly, uh, you want to think about the type of college that your student is interested in going to. There's a lot of different types of colleges. There's public versus private. There's in-state versus out-of-state. Community college versus a four-year university. Um, so if um, you can get that narrowed down, you could at least know where to direct your search. Some of these options are cheaper than others. For example, a public uh, university is going to be cheaper. 
than a private. An in-state institution is going to be cheaper than an out-of-state institution. A community college, which really uh, the mission of a community college is access, and there's community colleges almost on every corner. They're in every city. They're close by, and um, you know that's a good option, especially if your student is unsure of if they really want to go, but they think they might want to go, or if they're undecided in their major, because they can go to community college and hopefully um, they can gain um, their, you know, take their general ed requirements, and then they can transfer those requirements should they de decide to go on to a four-year institution. But of course, you want to check on how the transfer works and if the credits will transfer first before you do that. And so um, there's also, as someone mentioned, trade schools, all kinds of different options for schools. So you do not have to go to a four-year institution. And as I said before, you really don't even have to go to college, but college is a good choice for those who would like to go. So I want to say if you're on a budget and you really don't have the money available and um, your student might be a little undecided about whether they want to go or not, a community college is really a good option for them to kind of get their general education requirements out of the way and to be able to get their feet wet, kind of see what college is like. Uh, and community colleges are a bit different than for your uh, institutions, but at least would allow them to get started. And so uh, they can continue from that uh, from there on if they uh, would like to go and transfer, like I said. And so there's also residential versus commuter. Commuter. Commuter colleges are typically um, community colleges. You drive in, you drive home. Residential colleges, you spend the night, you stay in a residence hall, you live there. And so those, of course, are more expensive than just driving back and forth, but you have to weigh the cost for yourself. How far is it from your house for your student to commute or where they're staying or how much is parking and how much is gas and how much is the maintenance of car? So you need to take all of that into consideration when you're making these decisions. And you also need to realize that uh, if, you're, if your student is staying on campus, usually there's a requirement that they stay in a residence hall uh, for at least the first year, maybe the first two years. Um, so that's very uh, important that you weigh those costs as well. So um, because after the, let's say the junior year, they're able to go and live off campus at that point, then maybe they can get a roommate. Um, they can also maybe share expenses with someone and pay for an apartment and things of that nature. And maybe that can be uh, some cost savings for them. Now, if they're staying on campus, maybe the room savings or the, the savings will come when they have like multiple roommates. So you can have two roommates, you can have three roommates, you can have four roommates, you know, and at that point, I'm thinking it's getting a little crazy, but you know, that is a way to save a little bit of money that way. And so the third way that I'm trying to talk about to this morning about saving money is financial aid. I cannot say enough about financial aid. You can start searching for financial aid at any time, at any time. And so the earlier you start, the better, because this is something that does take time. It's not going to appear overnight, but you can find all kind of money if you are looking for it and if you're looking in the right places. There's a lot of different types of aid, um, but primarily we're going to talk about grants, scholarships, and loans. Now, grants, that's money that you don't have to pay back. We all love grants. That's our best friend, okay? Scholarships, they can be merit-based. They can be athletic scholarships. They can be based on a membership in a group. They can come from various sources, like maybe community centers, community groups that you belong to, organizations that you may belong to or your student belongs to. Um, they can come through programs such as Shirley is talking about um, or different uh, things that they have available in the community to allow uh, funds to be given to your child when they get ready to go to college. Sometimes even your employer has like an employee benefit that is, um, can be applicable to your child. And so there's a lot of different ways, but like I said, you have to start early and you have to do all of the work that's required for that. 
uh, there's loans, which is our, we really don't want to talk about loans, but that is a way to uh, be able to pay for school. And so, <laughs> um, you know, that's one good thing to think about. You need to fill out the FAFSA. You need to fill out all of the online uh, organiz uh, ap applications for scholarships. And I also think that I might need to come back <laughs> and talk to you guys later uh, about other ways in which you can save money. But just remember, this is a journey and it is work, but it's worth it when you when you get the return on investment. I love I love everything you had to say. And I was looking at the time saying, I'm going to have to cut her off. I'm going to have to cut her off. Yeah. Um, and which I hate that. I hate that mm -hmm. all the time. But y'all, number one, get her book. Get her book. Um, it's called um, College Roadmap. Um, you can find it on Amazon. I, we will also put her link of her organization in there, which I had it popped up a few times when she was speaking. Again, y'all, this is Dr. Greta Oliver. Um, the book, The College Roadmap, um, again, it was listed as Amazon top 12 bestseller, the top 12 bestsellers list. So y'all, it's no joke. Um, I was floating out there and was able to find out that this this book is being offered in the classroom. So mm -hmm. it's there's some information in there that I think we all need to glean from. So thank you so much. We're gonna have her on a Zoom, y'all, a Zoom workshop. So if you know anybody, make sure you're a mm -hmm. Patreon member. Go to www.patreon.com backslash news in motion and join y'all $15 a month. That's five cups of coffee. And today your coffee is free. So you can go and put that $5 in the bucket so that you can come on over to Patreon. Many thanks to you for joining us today. Um, I'm going to go into the inspirational message. You can stay in the green room and I'll come back to you once I shut down the show. So okay. uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all, the inspirational message for today, the inspirational message for today is this. Who told you that? Who told you, you cannot uh, conquer, you cannot progress, you cannot do the things that God has ordained for you to do in this season. Y'all know I pulled that out of uh, uh, Genesis chapter one uh, and two and three, when I'm, what I'm going to and talk about right now. Um, listen, y'all, listen, listen. When Adam and Eve, uh, at that point was the man and the woman, hid because in the cool of the night, they heard, you know, God coming up upon them. And, you know, they were like, he was like, who told you that? I love, I just love that. Who told you that? Who told you that you were naked? Who told you that you can't do certain things? Thank you, Dr. Kim Carter. She said, get Gail's book. Who told you that? Listen, who told you that? Y'all, we need to come out of allowing other people to speak things or to project things into our lives that does not line up with what God has called us to do in a particular season. We have to be bold and live the life that God has called us to live. Listen, listen, time out for seeking permission from people. Time out from seeking someone to validate the work that God has called you to do in this season. Time out for all of that, y'all. It's a new season, y'all. It's a new day. And what's this? What's the song? Uh, fresh anointing coming your way. There's a freshness. There's a uh, there's a mighty move. I believe in this season. I told y'all yesterday about Hannah. Mm -hmm. See, y'all, we need to start praying and asking God and remove ourselves from it and allow him to bless us the way he would want to bless us. And I think that is so important. But I think I need to add this piece to this as well. And that is when you allow God to move in your life, get ready. I want you to get ready because the enemy is going to come to steal, kill, and destroy. But we have to remember that Jesus comes to bring life and to bring it in abundance. And in that abundance, come on, enemy can't knock you off your feet, but he's going to come to try to get you off course. But that's when you have to tap into what's on the inside of you and continue to stand. Catch Gail each weekday on News in Motion on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash news in motion or her YouTube at youtube.com slash Gail Dudley. You can also follow Gail on Instagram and Twitter at Gail Dudley and visit her website 
www.gaildudley.com. Until next week, as Gail always signs off, stay well and remember to make some moves.